Hey friends, welcome back. I am so excited to be here today with the amazing Lori Rivers over in Charlotte, North Carolina. Lori is known as the long COVID and MECFS back to health guide because she has such a passion to help people recover from chronic disease, has been doing it for such a long time and has been helping so many people to get their health and their vibrant life back and just, you know, be happy again. You have been on my channel before. I'm so grateful that you've come back. You first shared your story about a year and a half ago, and it is one of the most incredible recovery stories I've heard, um, just from really such a bad place to such a place of vibrant health. So I'll link that for people who want to get all the details on your journey. Um, today, we're going to be diving into mainly some, you know, some big insights that you've had about, you know, what is triggering these conditions in people. But for people who aren't aware of your story, can you give us sort of a, if it's possible, a kind of the quick version or a summary of what that journey was? Just sum up a couple decades for me in a minute or two. <laughs> Crazy. Well, basically, when I was in my early 20s, I got very sick with severe MECFS to the point where a lot of times I couldn't feed myself. I was bed bound for, you know, about eight years, not that whole time, but but close, you know, bed bound and housebound. And I was watching all my friends from college, like go off and get famous and be super successful and all that kind of stuff. Like literally they were on TV and I was watching TV and they would be on TV. And I was like, <laughs> are you kidding me? I can't move, you know? Um, and I'm sure that a lot of you out there are familiar with that experience. So I did get through that and I actually started coaching people with MECFS at that point to help them to get better because there was so little information out there, especially at that point, because the internet was very new. So I'd been doing that for 20 years and then COVID came along and I got it kind of around first wave, but I realized pretty soon that I had developed MECFS again, just with some slightly different flavors, right? Some slightly different symptoms. I also realized that since this was a pandemic that tons of people were going to be developing long COVID slash MECFS. As I was getting well, which I was able to do within about eight months, um, which if you're dealing with long COVID or MECFS, you know that that's a pretty short amount of time, but I was able to get well from that using my own you know, what I've been coaching people for a while. So I developed a program from that to, to help people out, uh, which I think so many of us who write Raylan, who teach who, and who are guides through this, this illness have had our own intense experience with it. I can, I can't even really imagine what that must have been like for you, especially after such a severe, you know, first experience living with this, but you know, the little belts I have of I'm just thinking about you being a coach and then having to take your own advice. I find it can be very humbling, you know, because <laughs> we get to a place, like, I start to get to a place where I almost get, you know, not cocky, but maybe just overly confident in my like self-care abilities and I've got it all figured. Okay. That's not, that, that's cocky. <laughs> but then, you know, it just, life isn't that linear and then things happen and you kind of get knocked back. And then I just have to even just be like, Raylan, you know, start taking your own advice. You're not doing what you're saying. And it's just, it's just a good, a good opportunity for empathy and to remember what it's like. Um, yeah. For people yeah, out there who are facing so these things. Totally, so totally agree with that. Yeah, because especially when you're feeling really good, it can sometimes, you know, if you've been feeling really good for a while, you're just not as as tuned into how crappy, you know, people are feeling yeah. when they're having the MECFS. But you know, it doesn't take a lot to to remember that place yeah. when you when you've been there. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I did recover from long COVID, so no more post-exertional malaise and things like that. But I've always, my whole life, I've had what I've come to call weather-dependent fibromyalgia, which means that some days I am like Wonder Woman. I, full of energy, I can get up and do like, like handstand drills for 30 minutes and then do an advanced yoga class and then do high intensity interval training for 30 minutes and then do the rest of my day like totally fine, plenty of energy. And then used to be that I would have days where I couldn't get up off the sofa and sometimes it was weeks. So, and I, 
had a really tough time figuring out what, like, why, you know, all through my childhood, all through my adult years, in and out of hospitals, all that, all that stuff that I'm sure, again, a lot of you are probably familiar with. You've probably had similar experiences. And I did finally realize when I lived in Los Angeles, and then I moved, because while I was in LA, most of my days were Wonder Woman days. And then I moved back to the Southeast, and most of my days were sofa, pain, brain fog, muscles don't work days. So I finally figured out the what you know the weather piece of it, and I could literally I won't go into too much detail because but it's really funny you know I I could watch the weather front starting to approach and feel physically what was happening to me or I could feel physically what was happening to me and say okay we have a trough over us right now <laughs> or there's a cold front on the way or you know whatever so um, but I would do these experiments on myself and I'm gonna try to make this short so I'm not gonna go into too much detail but what I finally realized was that I still had something in me that was that had been causing these you know this lifelong illness this lifelong chronic illness even though I treated candida even though I treated parasites even though I treated all these things I basically I started doing ozone therapy and I was having such intense Herxheimer responses that I knew that it was killing off something in my body that shouldn't be there and so I started to research that and went down this whole new not new but you know very much in depth avenue of treating all of these hidden infections and for me, within about four months, life of treatment, of specific treatment, mm -hmm. lifelong fibromyalgia was gone. I'm so happy for you, first of all. That sounds like a horrible thing to have been dealing since childhood. How incredible. I imagine that by this point, you start to think almost like, I think I've just got this for life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It. It's just a normal part of your life, you know? So you... <sighs> And, and I think this happens for a lot of people who have been chronically ill for a long time. Mm. You just go, well, this is my life. That's, that's it, you know? Yeah. And that's one of the reasons we wanted to do this video and have this conversation today, because from your own experience, your own healing and your work with others, you've had some significant insights you know, over the last however long about what could be at the root cause of some of these types of conditions. So please tell us more about that. And, you know, I'm forever grateful, appreciative of the ozone therapy, kind of super intense Herxheimer responses because that led me to this place. And every, it's crazy. It's really interesting. Almost every single student that has been going through this program you know, when we talk about hidden infections, I'll just I'll just say that the the root cause of all of these illnesses of the long COVID, of the MECFS, of MS, of fibromyalgia, all of these things, it's these hidden infections. So we're talking fungus, we're talking parasites, we're talking these bad microbes, right? And Again, I was like, well, but I've treated all of those and my diet is so clean, <laughs> so clean. You know, how can this be happening? It's several different reasons, but the main one really is antibiotic use. I mean, I don't know, you tell me, Raylan, how, how many times growing up were you prescribed antibiotics? A lot. Right? A lot. Yeah. So, so... We in, first of all, we inherit our microbiome from our parents, especially our mom. And then almost immediately, if we get sick when we're a kid, we're, it's, it's like antibiotics were given out like candy, at least when I was, you know, when I was growing up. So we, and then there are other environmental factors and things like that. But what happens is when we treat these hidden infections in the correct order, then the, this is the way that I think of it, actually. 
is that our body is like a house and we have termites. The house has termites. So all of the wooden structures that hold up that house are compromised. And this is why we develop things like long COVID, like MECFS, especially after, you know, it can be after years and years of stress, but also after like a, a big viral load or a big hit mm -hmm. like COVID. So uh, a storm comes along like COVID and if the house is solid, then, you know, things are okay. Maybe you yeah. lose a few shingles here and there yeah. or something. But if those, if that structure has been eaten away by the termites, by the parasites, the fungus, and, and that structure has been compromised, then a strong wind will blow it down. So that's where that, that treatment comes in. And that's where my you know, full recovery came in and where my clients and my students are experiencing full recovery. And this is where it gets a little weird. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm so curious. What could possibly be? Okay. I know, right? I'm literally on the edge of my seat. <laughs> okay, so, okay, good, good. Usually within a week, and this is what happened to me as well, within a week or two of either changing their diet to the relief and transformation eating plan. So it's a specific eating plan and or starting treatment, treatment cycles. Every single student, except for maybe two, start passing worms. And I'm, t I know it's like, I, and, and when I saw, when I saw oh that goodness. for me, I was like, First, ew, gross, yes. Yeah. But secondly, it's a huge relief because you see, you know, so much about these illnesses, you don't see. You go and get tests and everything shows up normal. Even mm -hmm. if you are bed bound, you go to the doctor and they check you out and everything's normal, right? And, and so to say, okay, those are not supposed to be in there. <laughs> so there's actual proof for us to be able to see, well, yeah, no wonder I've been so ill because these, the, you know, these microbes, they, they release toxins all over the place. Lots of different types of toxins too. So yeah. some types of toxins affect the brain. Some types of toxins affect the, the guts. And, and they inhabit different parts of the body, you know, organs and, and things like that. And, and they're eating up your nutrients. Mm. So I, I'm going to stop. Yeah. This must be crazy to have seen this pattern with so many people. It's just like such a revelation in my understanding of parasite testing and my experience of it is that it's actually not reliable at all. Like I, my doctor, my integrative doctor in Canada would get me test done, but he said they're really only testing for like two out of the however many that exist. So I also, so I got tested when I was in Canada and everything came back fine. But then when I was in Southeast Asia, <laughs> um, I lived in different, you know, developing countries and um, places that where parasite infections were quite common. And it was clear that I had parasite infections. <laughs> um, but like, <laughs> Okay, um, warning for people watching, this is going to get a little bit gross. <laughs> but just an example of how much we can or cannot, in my experience, test parasite testing. So I, at one point, actually threw up a worm. I was so sick, like I had food poisoning, and I was so, like, I, there was no denying it, what it was. So I went into the doctor, and they did a test, and it came back negative. Like, I didn't have a parasite infection. I'm like, this is, there's, there's no way... Um, that I don't. Um, so I, yeah. I was in a country where you can just go get whatever medication you want. So I just got the medication I needed. You don't need a prescription or anything. So, and it did, it made me really sick when I took it, which told me it was killing off a lot. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Well, and yeah. I love that you brought that up too, the, the testing, because I've had the same thing happen with my students, you know, they go in, they get the test done, comes back ne negative. Yeah. And the next day they are passing 
worms that you just, you just, you just, you know, when I think about my recovery, so this all happened when I started taking like high doses of antiparasite medication was when I was recovering from MECFS. But I, no, I never tie that into the story because I think, well, I was I was living in a developing country and, you know, it was just something on the side that had nothing to do with what I was going through. But I, I really don't connect. I haven't connected the two of them at all. I haven't really thought about it. My head's kind of exploding right now. Yeah, me too. That's exactly <laughs> it. Raven. Oh, my gosh. Because that's what we find. We have people have to take these high doses of antiparasite yeah. and antifungal, and, and and we do it in a specific way so that the body is able to handle it um, a little bit better. And in fact, sometimes people yeah. find that it's the that the meds are easier for them than some of the herbals. Okay. which is really interesting. And I had been, I mean, I've been so anti-medicine for so long. <laughs> but when it's this level of infection, like what you were experiencing, yeah. the, the meds are necessary, especially for the parasites. Yeah, there's really effective medications out there for it. It's I, I don't there's probably other ways to treat it, of course. But yeah, that seemed to work really well for me. I'm just thinking for people who are watching right now and they're thinking, like, am I full of worms right now? And how would I know if the tests won't tell me? So like, what does this mean for people who are facing these conditions and wondering if this might be at the root cause for them as well? What do they do? There aren't many doctors out there who know how to approach this. Mm -hmm. Um, you were so lucky that you were in a place where you could just go and get the, the medications that you needed. But what, you know, you joined my course, <laughs> not to be, you know, pushy about it, but seriously, um, because we go through every single step, like, like I hold your hand through the whole thing. Uh, you know, what you can start today is you can start cutting, I mean, you've, probably all heard this over and over again. You cut out all the sugar, all the alcohol, all the processed foods, um, and, and really a ketogenic based diet is, is going to be the best or eating plan is the word that I prefer because diet, I don't know, but, but that's where you start out. And, but, but the other, you know, the good news is that first of all, it's treatable. And secondly, once those hidden infections are treated, then a lot of times the other hidden infections that have been present, things like EBV or Lyme or long COVID that have maybe still been active, usually those take care of themselves. But if they haven't, we have ways to address that as well. But it, you know, it's, it's incredible. It's like you're you know, going back to that house analogy our, our bodies have this innate blueprint so that once we treat the termites, you know, once we treat those hidden infections, the body is able to restructure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, put that strong structure back into place and to, to rebuild. I'm curious though, in your experience with people, because I'm all about for the most part, as much as possible, treating things in a natural way, doing things through what we eat and, and all of that. And when I found out about these parasites, I went to, when I went to the doctor and I was started saying all these diet changes and she looked at me like I was insane and said, like, there's, I don't think there's anything you can eat that's going to kill off these parasites. Yeah. <laughs> like you're going to need medication. Um, so I'm like, okay, I, enough said, like, I'm not messing around. This is <laughs> really disturbing. So I want this done. So in your experience, you know, what has worked best for people? It, for the parasites, it has to be the medications. Okay. Um, you know, we start with the eating plan so that you're not continuing to feed them as much. Right. I mean, any food that you ingest is going to feed them to a certain degree, mm. but carbs is what they love. It's what okay. they eat. You know, and that's why for so many people, I just, I remember when I was sick that first time around, my sugar cravings were so bad. They were to the point where even though I could barely get out of my bed and I could just crawl along the floor, I would go and find the sweet things that my father had hidden from me so that I wouldn't <laughs> eat them. And I would eat them <laughs> because that's because it's all those little critters inside of you going, 
we need sugar. We want sugar. It's, it's, I'm, I'm glad that you're so honest about that because I know so many of us really just want to support our bodies in a natural way, but it's also yeah. medication has its purpose and its place in all of this. And it's important to recognize when that needs to be a part of the equation. And I also love that you brought up the cravings because I've had massive sugar cravings for most of my life. And I used to think it was just like a, a willpower thing or something was wrong with me or I had bad habits, but it was bigger than me and stronger than me. Like I would get up in the middle of the night to eat sugar. And then when I was sick, this continued. And I remember, you know, when I started to get a bit better, I moved in with my dad because I got divorced and we sold our house. And my dad, I made him, he had this locked filing cabinet. I made him put all of his sugar and his sugary cereal, even his peanut butter with sugar in there. And he had to have it the key because I couldn't stop myself. Like I just couldn't. I had so much self-control on all these other things, but on this, I just had none. And then once I healed my gut, and for me, it was things like, you know, fermented foods and uh, more plant-based foods and different things like that. But the cravings just went away. Oh my gosh, Gone. we both had our dads having those, <laughs> <laughs> those sugary things for all us. Oh, you man. know, another interesting thing too is alcohol, because I know that there was a point where I, because for, for most of that, for most of that illness, I was not able to even smell alcohol. It would it would physically make me weak and have a lot of trouble. But I did get to the point where I was able to tolerate it a little bit and it would give me energy. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, hmm, okay. And and you know, I did I did of course realize that this is not a good thing because it is feeding those things, even even mm -hmm. the little bit I knew about the the bad microbes at that point. But I've spoken with so many people who, who have the, you know, those cravings, whether it's sugar or alcohol, because they do give you a little bit of a lift for, for a yeah. bit, but then the crash is even worse and it's making the whole thing worse because it's feeding, right. you know, the hidden infection. And they, yeah. And again, it's not about the willpower. It's not about the, yeah. which I, I really want for people to understand because a lot of times we can beat up on ourselves about, well, you know, I'm not following the eating plan that I know that I should be and just know that it's not just the willpower. <laughs> yeah. It's a literal, you know, physical thing that's happening that's causing you to create, you know, to have those cravings. And then you add in the low energy and the fact that these things will give you energy. You add in the fact that this is all very stressful and we tend to self-soothe and, you know, push things down with food and alcohol. But yeah, in those moments, I think for most of us, it just feels like, what is wrong with me? I know I shouldn't be eating this. I know I shouldn't be drinking this, but I, I keep doing it. Why do I keep doing this? Like it's some sort of personal flaw but it's yeah just step back and be a detective and look at everything that's going on and consider you know why is this happening it's not just that you're a bad person or a weak person you know there are things that are influencing your behavior sometimes I used to think of those little bugs in my gut uh, operating me like a puppet like a marionette doll and just getting me to eat things like I just I'm like they're in control now I just <laughs> yeah so for people who are watching and uh, want to know more about, you know, what would it look like if they got involved in your program or what are some of the examples of people in your program? What does that look like um, for the people that go through it? This is Aurelia's story, if I can get it to actually work. <laughs> so she, so she was, she was one of my first kind of guinea pigs with, with treating these hidden infections. Because I had several one one on one clients that I've been working with and I was telling them about this and they were like, oh, my gosh, please do this with me. So she wanted to be a guinea pig. So uh, she had been diagnosed with myalgic encephalomyelitis with ME. And she also this is really interesting. She also had a non malignant brain tumor as she was going through the treatments and the, the other what I call the foundations of healing not only did her ME started, start to get better, but her tumor shrunk to the point where she went in and the doctor said, oh, you probably never had a tumor. That must have been, must have been a mistake. Right. <laughs> okay, first. Uh, and then her symptoms went away. And, you know, again, wow. the medical community was like, oh, you probably didn't have ME either. <laughs> so... So, okay, you know, God bless them. But the exciting thing is that I, I actually just talked to her recently and she has completely moved on. She finished with her, you know, her full treatments. 
Mm -hmm. uh, several months ago and she's she's actually changed her life focus she was in the corporate world before now she is coaching other women who are still in the corporate world but she's coaching them about how to have a good work-life balance and here's what she said she said this time three years ago I was feeling hopeless and helpless after a diagnosis of ME I was really stuck in the push crash cycle which we're all very familiar with and was just miserable miserable physically and emotionally you know when when she started working with me and uh, she said after starting to work with Lori I had a plan for pacing and for addressing the micro microbial infections and a much better idea of what I was doing and why I was doing it right after only a month I could tell a big difference and now just a year later I'm back at a hundred percent I'm running on the beach again I've been able to be with my family and to go out with friends and um, to play with my children which is huge and not only back to where it was before but it's even better than that because she's had you know she had had some stuff even before she got any me uh, so that you know that's the reason that we do this right is to hear those those stories and those results so what if someone wanted to get involved with you or with your program what does that look like yeah there are a couple of different ways so i open up the full uh, it's called the relief and transformation course and that's where we go through like step by step i hold you you know, I hold your hand and take you through the whole treatment process, through every single aspect of it. And we really, tr we do a nervous system reset. We do the, the eating plan. We do the, you know, the microbial treatments. We look at it from every single aspect. And so that's the one where I can say, and I do actually say, that if you stick with this and you do, treatments for six months if you don't have significant improvement within those six months and sometimes full recovery does take you know a full year or 16 months is the most at the most if you're not having significant re you know recovery or significant improvement within that time i will give you all your money back that you've spent on this program like that's how much i believe in this and that's how much I want you to do this because I know it works. Uh, so we open up registration for that three or four times a year. I think this year is what we're planning on. It's a 12 week program and we meet once a week to go through any questions that you have to go through the material. Everything is in little bite sized pieces. You know, none of the videos are really over 10 minutes each so that you you know we don't we don't want you to crash so that's how that's set up now if you come in at a point where we're not open for registration there's also a membership program that i have and this will get you started more fully with your pacing with your eating plan which is where we start with the full course as well and like i said Actually, most people, if they're coming from a different type of eating plan, most people start to pass worms just with the eating plan. So you're already doing the, the good work, you know, and then you can come into the full relief and transformation course. So that's how that's how that works. Amazing. And of course, all of this will be linked in the video description. So for people watching, I highly encourage you to expand that and just take a look because Lori has been doing great work with people for years and years and years now and just helping so many people to get their life back. So yeah, thank you so much, Lori, for sharing all this today. This is amazing. And I'm sure there's people are watching that like this resonates, like this really kind of makes sense um, and is worth looking into. So I'm just, I'm really grateful that you're putting this information out there because the more we have for people, options and things they can start to kind of put the puzzle pieces together of what's happening for them. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. Um, and for those of you watching, if you enjoyed this, I'll link a playlist up here that has uh, quite a few more interviews just like this one. So people like Lori who are running programs, um, doing coaching, I'm um, just sharing you know, the insights that they're seeing and what they're seeing that is having success with people. So uh, yeah, uh, thank you again, Lori. Um, thank you to those of you who are watching, whatever you're facing, keep at it. You have totally got this. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it and I hope to see you in the next one.